How many times did you put on and take off your headset during development? I tell you what, I do it all the time and my head starts hurting after doing it too frequently. But what if we could minimize that drastically, right? Like what if we just don't have that pain on our head all the time? You may ask Dilma about how, what's the way? Well, let me walk you through a tool that I really like and it's called the Meta XR Simulator, which is going to basically allow you to quickly test features that may not completely require the physical device. Because you guys know when you have the physical device, that slows you down. For instance, when I was working on the last prototype that I did for this video channel, I tested a big part of my work with the simulator. Some of the controller actions were great when trying to pull the bowling ball. I was also able to perform grab actions, test physics over and over, which would have taken a lot of time if I didn't have the Meta XR simulator. Well, today we're gonna be doing something similar, but this time with the lightsaber prototype that I created for you in advance, you're also going to be able to basically follow along. I'm providing you all the resources. So let's jump into my computer and I start working on it. Go into github.com, Delmar V, and then repos. And in here, I have two repos that I'm gonna have you look at. One of them is gonna be the resources, and then the other one is going to be the actual project. So let's go ahead and open up the project that you guys just cloned or download it, we can go in here and then hit open. The first thing that I want you to do though, just to follow along is I already have a scene called the lightsaber. It doesn't have anything, but we're gonna be adding the dependencies, the resources that I had you download at the beginning of the video. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have you download all of these and basically drag them and drop them into the lightsaber folder. And then next we're gonna be going into meta and then tools and then building blocks. And then now let's go ahead and run and test our changes in the XR simulator. You're gonna see that this opens up the local sharing server and there's also a room that is showing behind the scenes. So I'm gonna go ahead and open the left controller. You can also look at the right controller if you like, but this is gonna be as an example. So we're gonna start with the keyboard shortcut. So if I were to hit A, you can basically move to the left and then D I can do move to the right. Basically, it's going to be your WASD to move in multiple directions. Also, if you want to basically look down and rotate, so I'm gonna look up, I'm gonna hit the up arrow, and then down arrow is going to allow me to, to actually look down. If I were to hit the left arrow, you can see that I can rotate to the right, and then the right arrow is going to allow me to rotate to the opposite direction. So you can use a combination of all of these ones. Another thing that is really cool though, if I wanna go down, I'm gonna basically hit F. And then if I wanna go up, I'm going to hit R. So basically I can uncheck this and now the controllers are going to be the ones that are going to be moving. I can still use my WASD to move around, to rotate and do all the things that I just showed you recently. I can also just click on it again. You can see that now everything is going to move. So what if I wanted to just move the, basically the right controller so I can uncheck the headset. I can uncheck the left controller and now that's going to be the only controller. The only thing that is going to move out of these different inputs. So another cool thing that I like to use, I can use the right bracket if I want to basically cycle through all of those. So input bindings, I already know the shortcuts, but if you don't, then you can look at these as a legend for those. And then the other one is gonna be the Xbox controller, which we're gonna be using next, but this will tell you how we can use that as well. And then lastly, about, this is really important, just make sure that you look at some of these paths so you understand what's available in here. And then I think I cover everything, and then you can also look at the left eye, or you can look at both eyes. So as I'm moving around here, you can also use that information. Then if you wanna just look at the right eye versus the left eye, you can also do that. And then this option here to collapse everything. All right, so I wanna be able to test grab interactions, right? So right now I don't have interactors in here that are going to allow me to grab the actual lightsaber. So what we need to do is we need to go into the actual tools here and then building blocks. And then I'm gonna go into interaction and then there's multiple interactions in here. The one that we're gonna add today is gonna be the grab interaction. 
And this is gonna be adding a queue by default, but I don't want to interact with that queue. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and delete it. And the cool thing with that though, is because I added that component, he added an interaction to the controllers and also to hands. I can still use my keyword, which is really cool, right? We can get closer in here and then maybe I'll just get closer and then I can grab it. And you can see that now we can grab the, so I'm basically pressing this button right here. I'm gonna hit the up arrow on the Xbox controller and you can see how I can cycle through those as well. So if I wanna move the left controller, I can also, you know, I can also do that. I can also use my keyword to bring it up and then I'm gonna use basically the left joystick on the Xbox controller to bring it closer to me. cycle through my left controller, and then I'm gonna go down. I find it easier for me to use the keyboard. So you can see that now that works. And then I can also use my mouse, right? If I basically hold my mouse, my right click, and then hold it, I can basically just move around. And you can see how the particle effects are working okay. I'm also holding U on the keyboard to be able to grab it, so I'm gonna let go of U. And you can see that now the actual lightsaber was dropped. So I'm gonna go back down and then hit F to basically go to a level where we can get closer in here. And then maybe around here, hit U, and then go up. And then with my mouse, I'm going to basically hit the little wheel on the mouse to be able to scroll. So I'm gonna scroll basically forward, and then I'm gonna scroll backward. And you can see that now we can also move it. I can also hold the scroll button to be able to move it around. So that's pretty, pretty cool. And then bring it closer to me, scroll. And you can see that I can now zoom in and then zoom out. All right guys, so I wanna show you how we can use the actual controllers with the Meta XR Simulator by setting up the data forwarding server. So go into your packages here and then Meta XR Simulator and then Meta XR Simulator again. And you're gonna see that we have these data forwarding servers. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and right click on it and then show in Explorer. And then when you do that, we can double click on it and I'm gonna show you this is an APK, right? So this is gonna be, you can install it the way that I'm gonna install it. So I'm gonna go ahead and open the Meta Developer Hub here and then go into Device Manager. And it's gonna show you here the device that you have connected. I also have it connected via USB-C. Just make sure that you do that. And actually I'm gonna put it here on the very bottom and then drag it and drop it. So it's gonna tell you here to do it on a release channel. I'm actually gonna put it on the device. And now in the VR device, you can go into library and then just make sure that you go into unknown sources under applications. And then it's gonna show you here where we just installed the Meta XR simulator, data forwarding server. Just go ahead and launch it. And then once you launch it, we should be able to connect it to our Meta XR simulator. So just collect it. And the first thing that you're gonna need to do though is to go into data forwarding. And when you do data forwarding, you're gonna see that it says not connected to the server. So we can hit refresh device list. And you're gonna see that now we can see the Oculus Quest that I have connected via USB-C. And then all we need to do is just click on the connect physical controllers. I'm also going to be grabbing the controllers and you can see how cool this is. So I can basically move the controllers around when I'm interacting with this. So what I'm gonna do though is I'm gonna hit the W key on my keyboard and then i'm also going to go down here so we can get a little closer that way i don't go through my screen and break it <laughs> but you get the idea now i can grab it and let's see if you can hear the noise the actual sound effect when i do it pretty fast so what i'm gonna do though is i'm gonna go ahead and throw it really far and you can see that it resets. So that part is working correctly. If for whatever reason the controllers are not calibrated correctly because the device is positioned in an odd area, just make sure that you click on these calibrate controllers and it's gonna have a countdown and it's going to basically reset the controllers to be at the right location. So now I can grab it in here, see if I can throw it. And there we go. All right guys, so, so far so good. Let's go ahead and add a couple more things to make this a little bit more entertaining. So let's go into prefabs and I'm gonna grab the Empire Crate. And we can probably just place it right there. I'm gonna go ahead and clone it a couple of times. Place it right there and then we can do that one there. And then we can also go ahead and put this one right here. 
So what I'm gonna do for these ones though, this one I'm probably gonna do about, let's do 30, 30, 30. That way we can place them right in there and then make them a little bit smaller. And then I'm also going to go ahead and clone these guys right here, maybe maybe one time, I think it's fine. That way we can we can see them falling. And I'm actually gonna move them up a little bit. This doesn't need to be doesn't need to be perfect, but they're gonna fall with gravity because they have rigid bodies. And then I'm also going to go ahead and place that one right there. So another thing that I'm gonna do though is I'm also going to go ahead and rename these. You guys know how I hate to have those different namings. I like to have everything consistent. And then what I'm gonna do is there's gonna be a new component that we need to add to this lightsaber with hand poses. I'm gonna go into the very bottom, add a new component. And this one is gonna be called the lightsaber slicer. And this component is going to allow us to slice the object. It's using easy slice. If you go into a third party here, you can see that that component is in there. And then that's an open source component available on GitHub. I'll put that in the description. But this is already implemented. So what I need to do here is I'm also going to add a, you know, a cut material. And then with this cut material, we're gonna have basically the same coloring as these letters, basically when we slice it the part, the inner part of the slice is going to have a specific color. And then the force here, I think I did 130 and then 130. And then we can just change this to be one. And then the star slice point is gonna be, I'm just gonna search for a star point. You can look at the code to understand how this works. And then I think everything else in here looks good to me. So now let's go ahead and hit play and test it out. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and grab it, right? And then I'm gonna go up, 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 and up. And then now I can move freely around. And you can see that now I can slice some of these objects. Let's go ahead and slice it. And then slice it. So another thing that I can also do though is I can put Unity side by side. So Unity is here on the right hand side. And then we have the simulator on the left side. And the cool thing is that Unity is updating in real time, right? So if I wanna get closer here and then maybe grab the lightsaber. I can grab it and then we can slice this object. You can see like in the case of the lightsaber though, things are changing in real time. So you can see the position changing in real time. You can also probably see how some of these objects are getting generated, like the upper underscore hole that you see right here on the hierarchy. So another cool feature that was added on V66 for the Meta XR simulator is the support for macOS, which is going to be pretty big for those of you who have been deploying to the device every single time. Specifically, if you want to test something and not have to have the physical device deployment, which takes a while, you can now use the Meta XR Simulator with macOS. So if you go in here, I recommend you go through all of these steps. And if you have questions or concerns about any of these, let me know in the comments. The difference here though, is that this is using the OpenXR in the standalone version. So if you go under player settings and we were to look at the XR plugin management, you're gonna see that on the standalone version, this is using OpenXR. On Android is using Oculus because that's where we're going to be deploying it to. But it is required to use OpenXR when you're using a standalone and that way you can test with the actual simulators. And then the same shortcuts, right? I can move with WASD. I can use my mouse to basically look around. I can hit F to get closer here. And I think I have the slice. I do have the slicing features in this demo. So everything is working. And you can see that we have all the different options in here that I just showed you previously. So now let's go ahead and test mixed reality features. So I'm gonna go ahead and clone that lightsaber and then we can just rename it to be lightsaber and then mixed reality. And then go ahead and double click it to open it up. I'm going to go into meta and then tools and then building blocks. And let's go ahead and add the pass through building block. Once you do that, we can close out of that and I'm gonna go ahead and move it next to the camera. I'm also going to uncheck one setting here on the center I anchor for post-processing and then just go ahead and collapse it as well. So the next thing that I'm gonna do though is I'm gonna go ahead and go into my project setup, make sure I apply the changes in here. And then once you're good to go, just go ahead and close it out. So with this, it's gonna be cool because we can now test mixed reality, go into Meta and then Meta XR Simulator. 
And then there's going to be synthetic environment server. I showed you that in the previous video where I did the tabletop game, but I want to show you more in depth. Meta also has more rooms that I want to show you today. So that's going to, it's going to show you all the power of what they added. And then let's go ahead and click on launch living room. And then it's going to open the living room area, which there's a table there. There's a couch, a TV. It's just a pretty cool area that it's going to allow you to test these experiences. And then once you're good to go, then we can go ahead and hit play. And now we should be launching in mixed reality. There should not be any skybox. If everything that I did was correct, then we should be good to go. And looks like it is correct. We can now see the real, you know, the, well, not a real world, but a mock-up or a mock environment of what the scene will be in the real world, which is cool because you can now start testing mixed reality experiences with the actual, you know, Meta XR simulator. And then what I'm gonna do, let's do 2.5, I think it's good, which is cool though, because now I can go around, like if you were walking around the area, and then you can also start adding things that are going to like the mixed reality components for scene understanding, we can add those. I'm gonna show you how we can add those as well. But the idea is that you can test mixed reality, right? By using the simulator, maybe with the right controller. And then I'll just start looking around. So we can start slicing. So I can go back in here, Meta XR simulator. And then let's say that you want to, we can add, maybe do one of the new ones, the office. And then it's going to relaunch and it's going to basically launch the synthetic environment, which is cool because it's also, that was also built with Unity. And I'm not gonna cover how to build custom environments today, but I'll add some documentation below. And then if you're interested, we can do a new video about it. And then once, you, once that is launched, now we can launch the Meta XR Simulator. And now that scene is going to be swapped out, which is cool because this is gonna be an office, right? It's a smaller area and it just has different elements like the table, the computer. And if you wanted to test your experience by using a different environment, then you have all of these environments that you can test with, or you can build your own environments as well. On the actual lightsaber component, we did add a slicer component, the lightsaber slicer. So there's prefab changes in there. So click on overrides and then apply. That way we have those changes and then we're gonna be removing it. We're gonna be removing that because we're gonna add another component from Meta, which is going to allow us to spawn it at a specific location. So what I'm gonna do for that though, is if you go on their scene, and then there's going to be these fine spawn positions, which is really cool, it's really simple to use, but it's going to spawn these lightsaber at a specific spot. And that spot is going to be driven by a label, and the label is going to be detected by using the MR utility kit. So anyways, I'll show you how it works. So if we go ahead and move it up here, now you can see that as soon as I did that, it added this component automatically. And that's because this is the mixed reality utility kit that allows you to get understanding about your surroundings. And there's a lot of cool things that it does. I won't cover it today, but I'll show you what we need to do today to make that work. And then what I'm gonna do though is on the prefabs here, we change the lightsaber with hand poses. So just go ahead and drag it and drop it so because i want these to be positioned at a table and what i'm going to do here is i'm going to uncheck other i just want the lightsaber to spawn at a table location and then i'll set this to one i only want one lightsaber by you know per game i don't want to have multiple and then i can designate that it's going to be on top of surfaces and then we can also check for overlaps in case we spawn other objects later on but for now i think this looks good I'm also going to go ahead and create a new one here. And this one is going to be for crates. So I'll just say this one is going to be for the crates. I'll just make it plural. And then this one, I'm going to go ahead and clone this guy here. And this one is going to be a small, I just want a small crates to be able to spawn. And then I'll just do actually hit escape and then let's do the constraint here. So I don't have to type it that many times. And then just set it to 15, no 156. And then also remove the position, set it to 0, 0, 0. Otherwise it's going to be offset when it gets positioned. And then I think everything else looks good. All we need to do is just associate it with these other fine spawn positions. And for this one, I'm gonna do something like maybe 15. I think it's, I just want a larger number. That way we can spawn many of those. And then I think everything else looks good to me here. Maybe for this one, we'll remove the, we can just remove the collider because I really want the boxes to fall. 
And then in fact, I'm going to also remove the mesh render. That way we just have the labeling here. And then for this one, I think I'm just going to go ahead and rotate it. We can just rotate everything so that we can see that message. We won't have the table just because I don't want the table. I want everything to fall with gravity. And okay, so I think that looks good. So I think we're good to test it, right? We got this guy that it's going to spawn the actual lightsaber. And then we have this guy that is going to spawn the actual crates, but things are not gonna collide with the real world because we need to add one more component and that component, it's going to be added to this game object. It's gonna be called the effect mesh. And I'll cover more about this for now. Just know that it's going to basically add collisions. And then I'm also going to be adding a specific material in here. And then it's gonna have colliders. And then I think everything else looks good. So for the collisions though, I only want the collisions to happen on the floor and also on the table and everything should be falling and everything is falling correctly. And it's cool because we have the crates in here added correctly for us. I'm gonna go ahead and increase the speed in here. And then I don't see the lightsaber and I think I know why. So what I'm gonna do here on this guy, let's make sure that we have it set to 000. All right, everything is running. You can see that now we have physics in our surroundings and it's all based on the actual objects that we have in the scene. So we can actually move towards the table and you can see that now we have the actual lightsaber here behind. So I'm gonna go ahead and get closer in here and then see if I can grab the lightsaber. Looks like I got it. And then I'm gonna go ahead and start cutting some of these objects. And we can probably just get closer here to some of these ones. I'm also gonna go ahead and hit F and then go down. You can see how I can test it. And you can see that now how the physics react to this new space. And let me see where the lightsaber is. So I'm gonna increase the speed here. And that's not a table. So the table is gonna be this one. And if it was positioned correctly, it looks like it was position correctly, so this is really cool. So another thing that is really cool and really powerful is not only that you can see it here in the actual Meta XR simulator, but we can also go into Unity though and look at the actual MRUK components that were tagged. So for instance, I can look at the room here, and then if you expand it, we can look at all the different components that were you know generated by the scene understanding by the MRUK component that we added. And which is really cool though, because that way you can see, okay, where are the tables? Are things spawning in the right location? In the case of the table though, the lightsaber was spawned at this location. I also have a couple of different crates that were spawned next to it. They're not overlapping. So that tells you that that's working correctly. We also have the materials that we can look at. So there's just a lot of data that you can get by using the Meta XR simulator, as opposed to testing on the actual physical device. Well, that is how you can move faster during development by using the Meta XR simulator and the cool new experimental option to run it with the Mac, which is a huge deal for many people, including myself. And if you want a more in-depth tutorial of how to set it up with the Mac, let me know in the comments below. And also don't forget to subscribe because I'm gonna be bringing you a new video with Meta by creating a productivity app it makes reality from the ground up. And also thank you very much for my patrons for supporting me so much over the years. I really appreciate all you have done for me. Thank you very much. And for everybody else that has been watching my content, thank you as well. So happy XR coding everyone. Thank you.